Thank you for being with us again tonight. And what a wonderful Easter celebration we have experienced. And so now I want us to think about tonight that victory in Jesus that is shared. Victory that is shared. Look at Luke chapter 24. Pick up at verse 44. Luke 24, verse 44. And as you're turning there, let me ask this. What are some marketing campaigns that we may remember, commercials that we remember? Remember, uh, Where's the Beef? Uh, that was Wendy's favorite uh, little commercial for a while. And Have It Your Way, uh, Burger King, uh, Just Do It from Nike, uh, Melts in Your Mouth, Not in Your Hand, M&M, uh, We Try Harder, Avis, Remember the old plop, plop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is from Alka-Seltzer and good to the last drop, Maxwell House Coffee. Well, you think about those as, as we spend a few moments in prayer time together. Holy Spirit, these companies worked hard to make their product known to everyone. We have something the world needs to know about as well. The victory we have in Jesus is too big to keep to ourselves. That's why Jesus told Mary, Magdalene, don't hold on to me. Go and tell the good news. Holy Spirit, fill us with humble bravery to tell others of Jesus. In his loving and compassionate name, we pray. Amen. I want us to think tonight first about scripture points to Jesus. The Old Testament scriptures pointing to Jesus. Listen to the reminder that Jesus has given now to his disciples after their resurrection. Uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written by the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Now, it's all going to start coming together for them. That's what Jesus is doing. He's, he, he's helping to open their minds and they're remembering what has taken place with him over these past years and, and the meanings that he was referring to. So they, they finally start understanding as Jesus is explaining the scriptures. Uh, he says, remember I told you, uh, this is what I was talking about. All of the scripture points to this event. And the sources here in Luke 44 and 45 that, that Jesus is using is the law of Moses, uh, the prophets, the Psalms, and, and notice the division. Look at verse 44. Uh, the division of the Old Testament that Jesus has referred to. Look at 44. He first says the law of Moses. That's the first five books of the Old Testament called the Pentateuch. That's, that's where the law was given. And then the prophets, uh, verse 44 of Luke 24, speaks about the prophets all pointing. The former uh, prophets... Joshua through 2 Kings, uh, the latter prophets, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 53.10 points to the resurrection. All right, from all the way from Isaiah all the way through uh, Malachi. And then in verse 44, Jesus mentions the Psalms. Uh, this is the section that's called the writings, the, the wisdom writings, uh, which comprise all of the remaining Old Testament books, uh, Ruth and Esther and Job and, and Psalms and Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes. Uh, but in Psalm uh, 16, beginning at verse 9, and Psalm 22, those two particular passages point to the resurrection. And that's what Jesus is saying. I, I have fulfilled these. Uh, these these are, are what's important that you remember. And why do you think he referred to the Old Testament when he was helping his disciples to try to try to tie everything together now. Well, they were good Jews. They, they had learned uh, the, the Torah. They had learned uh, the, the prophets. They had read the Psalms. Uh, they knew the scriptures that were there. Um, the Old Testament was the only Bible that they had at that point. And Jesus wanted to show them that, that he was 
fulfilling God's plan. He had not come to depart from God's plan. He had not come to destroy God's plan or, or to do away with it. He was saying, look, this is, this is where I fulfill the, the law, the prophets, the Psalms. So you're going to need that. I, I want you to know this. This is going to be a scriptural foundation for you to, to build your communication of the truth as you communicate with people. That you, you don't need to pull things out of the air. Show them the scriptures and how I have fulfilled them. And because Jesus opened their minds to the scriptures, uh, today we have a better understanding that all of these parts are all of God's plan. Uh, we can't just favor the, the Old Testament here over the New Testament or the New over the Old. It's all part of, of God's plan. The promise of salvation, the fulfillment of salvation in Jesus Christ. And here, here's the message of salvation that comes just from, from two Old Testament verses. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his faithful love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions, our sins from us. That's Psalm 103, verse 11 and 12. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger, abounding in faithful love, and one who relents from sending disaster. disaster. That's Jonah chapter 4, verse 2. One that relents from sending disaster only as an attention getter, never as, as getting even with. Oh. The scripture is teaching us. Our, our shared victory here now comes from God's infinite love, God's undeserved favor uh, to us, his, his grace, his compassion, and his forgiveness. They remove our sins and they... They take care of the penalty that we were going to have to pay for being sinners. God's desire is for all people to come to faith in Jesus Christ so that our sins will be washed away. Faith in Jesus Christ will bring us to a personal relationship with our Heavenly Father. Even though we were sinners, Paul says, you know, while, even though while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It is through Jesus that we come to the Father. It's not through any other additional book. It's not through any other rules or rituals and regulations. It's through faith in Jesus Christ that we come to the Father. Now, how would we share or, or summarize the grand story of Scripture for an unbeliever? Well, Certainly we begin by saying that God was and is at work throughout all of, of human history. His plan was accomplished through a, a particular group of people, the Israelites, that he called to be his, his chosen people, starting with, with Abraham and working his way all the way through. He taught mankind the penalty of sin and, and the solution for our sin is a substitutionary death, Jesus substituting himself for, for us, then God provided that, that perfect sacrifice through his son for the whole world to experience. Not just any particular one group, but all people of the world. What does, what does Luke 24, 44 teach us about God's rule and our understanding of this saving gospel. Well, God's Holy Spirit illuminates the meanings and the implications of what, what we read. As Jesus was opening up the minds of the disciples after the resurrection, now today the Holy Spirit opens our minds that we can understand the meanings here. God also uses teachers and Bible scholars uh, he also uses preaching to help us to understand and singing. Scripture contains God's truth. God uses his word to convict us, to convince us of what we need and what we need to do to apply his teachings 
to our lives so that we become closer to him, but also that we bring others uh, into his, his kingdom as well. So the central element of the gospel is, is before us tonight. That begins Luke 24, 46 and 47. Listen to the details of the prophecy that's here. Pick up now verse 46, 47. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead a third day, and that repentance and remissions of sin should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. Now, what specific prophecies did Jesus show that he had fulfilled? Look at, look at verse 46, if you would. He says, the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, would suffer. Did he not suffer that physical agony? Verse 46 said that he would rise from the dead the third day. And 47 says that we're to preach the repentance of forgiveness of sins and that it was to be for all nations, that, that the message would go forth first, the good news would go forth from Jerusalem. And that's where it did. These prophecies are critical because Jesus had to die to take the, the death sentence that we deserved. If, if he had not died, he would, or, or we still would be condemned for our sinful conditions. But he became our permanent sacrifice for all people over all the entire earth. And he had to rise again. Otherwise, if he hadn't risen again and was going to ascend back into heaven and the Holy Spirit would come upon us, then he would be just another martyr who died for a worthy cause. But not only did he die for us, but he also rose again to give us this new life in here. We share this victory with Jesus. As Jesus rose anew, you and I rise anew through belief in Jesus. So look at verse 47. What, what prepares us for Jesus' great commission? Here, here's our share of the victory, uh, that, that we must help people, that we must inform people uh, about their need for repentance. People have to experience the, the availability of forgiveness for their sins. And these truths must be proclaimed, uh, started in Jerusalem, and then it spread out around the world, and it used those Roman roads, and, and it took off like wildfire. Then it would spread to every place on the earth, even when the roads ended and they ran into the ocean. It got on board ships and went sailing. Now, the basics of the gospel, every Christian can share is this, that God loves each of us. He wants us to come to him through faith in, in Christ. And all people are really separated from God by our sinful conditions, resulting in our, our sinful actions, our, our sinful attitudes. We are in rebellion against God, whether it's an active rebellion or a passive rebellion. And that the death that we deserve for our sinfulness was taken up upon Jesus, was covered by Jesus. Now, we don't have to pay that price any longer. Jesus offers forgiveness, and our part is to confess that we need to be forgiven. If we don't realize that we need to be forgiven, uh, then it's going to be very hard. It's going to be impossible for salvation to take place. We must confess and repent and receive his offer of forgiveness by faith believing what God has said and what God has promised to give to us. Jesus then becomes both Savior and Lord. Savior saving us from our sins so that when we die, we can go to heaven. But Lord of every decision, everyday events, so that we bring glory to his name and that others will want to come and be a part of that. So now let's think about this, this sharing the, the message Listen for Luke's version of the Great Commission. Now look at uh, chapter 24 of Luke again. Pick up at verse 48 and 49. You are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endowed with power from on high. 
See, Jesus reminded them that they were witnesses to all of these events. Now, why would that be important uh, in, in fulfilling the Great Commission? Well, Jesus would say, you saw these events firsthand. You are an eyewitness to these events. That carries a lot of weight. And if you read over in Paul's writings in 1 Corinthians, that, that he appeared to over 500 people at once, plus many more. Eyewitnesses have seen Jesus. You're involved in many of these events that have taken place over these last three years. We're going to use them now, disciples, to help others to realize that this Jesus is the miraculous Savior and Lord. You'll be able to explain it. People in the future will, will have questions about what took place, but they're going to remember the things that are recorded here in the words and that you have seen and that you have experienced. And it's going to change their lives and bring them into the very family of God himself. So we, we are not eyewitnesses to these events that took place. So then what qualifies us today in 2021 to be witnesses for Christ? How do we share the victory? Well, a personal sin-repenting relationship with the risen Savior is first. And we have seen the evidence of God work in our lives and in the lives of our family and friends. We've experienced peace with Jesus, peace with the Heavenly Father, uh, peace in the midst of traumas, uh, peace with ourselves. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. So what promise did Jesus make to these disciples and to believers today? He says, I am going to send you the promise, the Holy Spirit. You will be clothed. You will be endowed with the power of the Holy Spirit. And God's Spirit gives us the spiritual power to live a life that's pleasing unto God, uh, to minister to others, to take and to send the gospel around the world. Jesus promises this power from on high, which is the role of the Holy Spirit, to, to give them, the disciples, wisdom and insight, you and me today. Empower them to do miracles, to protect them, to direct their thinking, their planning, the, the same with us. We don't need to perform miracles because how, how are you going to top the resurrection? You can't. There's no one can do a miracle greater than that. So why do we keep focusing on miracles, but simply to say, here's the miracle of the word. Let it speak to you first and foremost. And how can we follow the Holy Spirit today? Right here at Gloucester Point Baptist and wherever we are, how can we follow the Holy Spirit? Truly by actively reading the truths in God's word. Pay attention to what the Bible says. Allow God's Spirit to apply these specific commands and principles to our lives to, to pray for God's direction and wisdom. We don't need to ask for a sign. We're going to look at that Sunday in Judges when we talk about Gideon. Uh, pray for God to speak to us, not a, not a sign to speak to us. Then obey the direction that God has given us. And I promise you, beloved, we will share in that victory of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, fill us, we continue to ask, with humble bravery to share our victories of Jesus with someone else. If we've never told someone of the victory that we have in Jesus, we pray for the opportunity to do so with a friend or especially with a family member. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us when we are confused about what to say on behalf of Jesus or when to say the name of Jesus, or even how to say the name of Jesus. We trust our words of faith into your strong power and presence. We pray now in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to invite you to remember to come to Sunday school. We're going to open back up, regather for Sunday school this Sunday, April the 11th. The children and youth will be in their Sunday school classrooms. And the adults will be in the sanctuary, spread out with social distancing, wearing our mask. And it begins at 945, and I look forward to seeing you this Sunday at Sunday School. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.